Hello, this is Fendish with Dimension Turing, and welcome to this installment of the Tinker Tools video guides. Uh, this time we'll be talking about rotational offsets. I've got some examples here of a few things that you can do with rotational offsets, and they're all very easy to do. Very, very easy to do. Rotational offsets sounds like it's something that should be compl complicated. Um, a name I like to use for things is also called spinning, and that kind of makes it sound as easy as it as it is. Basic rotational offset would be like say I I drop this plank. I want to rotate it 90 in the roll so that it's standing upright. Now if I want to make a corner and I can do a distance offset with it too, but I usually just manually move them into place. I want to rotate it 90 degrees in the in the yaw so that way and then I can just line it up and now I've got a little corner a little corner piece but that's not the fun part of rotational offsets the fun part are things like this so let's go ahead and get started with how you can spin out some things. Let's start, and these are not, most of these are not building blocks. Um, here we go, an elegantly styled base. To start off with this, you're gonna flip it upside down. I have the examples here at maximum scale. Now how much something is going to spin, how many items it's going to need, and what the rotation is, it's all going to vary um, by the item. And this one, as you can see, this, the selection point is in the center, but it's at the bottom. So we've got three sides here that we can account for. So, and we know that we're going to spin in the yaw. So we want to use new items, and we're going to copy. We're going to try 24, and that's on a 15 degree rotation. Now, since I'm making a complete circle, and since I want to be able to move the entire thing once it's done, I'm actually going to do enough copies to make the entire circle because 15 times 24 is 260. I'm going to copy this one, and then remove it, and then hit paste. And all of the, the 24 new vases are going to paste right in that spot and it's going to make a fancy little bowl or a vase or a bird bath or whatever you want to use it for and you know you can sink it you can flip it upside down and use it that way or however you want to do it it's entirely up to you and then I want to go and select all these items again. Just through the item list because that's going to be easier than trying to find each thing separately. And then I want to rotate it again so that it's like this and it's also going to depend on which axis you rotate it in. It's going to vary on how it comes out. So let's try it in the roll. And you can do this with chairs, quills, um, tables, you name it. You can literally spin anything and make it round. Well, that's kind of an interesting little design. So even if it doesn't come out right, you might have found something new that you like. And let's try it in the pitch and see how that comes out. It's going to come out just like it did in the roll, except facing the opposite direct, uh, the other direction. Okay. So with this one here, we'll get to the building blocks last. Um, this one here is six prong idols, and six prong idols are one of my favorite items to spin out. 
so let's just say 90 in the pitch. And this one, this the selection point is also in the center, but it's at the bottom. So if I want to do 15, actually I can do 30 and 6, copy. And this is really a part where experimenting is kind of key. That wasn't what I intended. Okay. So then which way is that going to rotate? Hmm. So that went that way. There we go. Would not have expected that. So those make excellent little snowflakes or sometimes screening. Um, I really like using six prong idols for structural stuff. But for now, let's look at how we made this pillar. It only needs six pieces to come all the way around, and this is going to end up being two rotations uh, because you got the top half and then you got the bottom half. So we'll copy that, remove that, and then hit paste. Okay, then we want to raise the whole thing up. We're going to offset by 180 in the roll. So we need to get that high and copy and paste. Because just like with distance offsets, when you have multiple items selected, it only counts that center point, so it thinks it's one piece, so it moves it all as a single, single, single unit. So then we've got this, and now we've got some spiffy little pillars here. Then I'm going to pull up these corner posts because this is, I don't have enough to make a second cone, but we can just use, just use some poles. Okay, so we we'll rotate this, we want to just pick a rotation, Oop, not 10, about 150. Because the poles and the center points on this, or er, the poles and the corner posts on this, were pretty much exactly the same. So you're going to set a scale. And this is going to be a lot of items. With this one here, this is on a six degree rotation, so there's 60 of these uh, to elim eliminate gap at the bottom. Let's try an eight degree rotation. So eight, yeah, I'm using my calculator here. 360 divided by eight is 45. Then we're gonna copy, pull that up, and hit paste. And eight's probably gonna, oh, no, eight looked like it worked about right. So this is the easy way to make a conical shape. And of course, you would experiment to find out exactly what rotation is going to work well for you, whether it's going to be 8 degrees or 9. We probably could have got away with a 9 degree curve here instead of just using 8. There's quite a bit of overlap down at the bottom. All right, and so that takes, that takes care of that. So now when you're talking about rotations, and spinning planks are a special animal because of where the selection point is. Okay. Well, the plank, as you can see, the selection point is pretty much centered on the plank, not at any end. 
So when, if I say want to rotate this to try to do a spin with it, and I go in the 45, um, what ends up happening is I usually end up with a really cool hourglass shape, but not so much an actual round thing. So I mean that could have some uses, but if we're wanting to make a cone, then we want to do something a little bit more like this. We'll just take a plank, and then I'm going to sit here and scale it a little bit bigger. And then I'm going to. copy and with a 180 rotation do that and I'll still have to move it around. Now once upon a time if you wanted to make a cone out of planks you would have to put down the two blocks, get them all lined up, um, save it as a set and then either do an incremental rotation or rotate it by hand to try to get it to come out right. So since we got the planks like this, we're going to half the uh, the number of the rotation. So we're going to take it from 18 degrees down to 9. And that's because we're going to get some overlap here. So we're going to copy and remove it and then hit paste. And then while it does this thing is, you know, it's going to come around in a complete circle. I try not to move too much when I'm doing a lot of uh, actual building, especially copying and pasting like this. Just for s reasons like this here, where it doesn't necessarily want to cooperate with you and come together right. Looks like there was a piece missing. But if that happens, it's a pretty simple matter to just pull everything up and then do the copy and paste again. We're going to do that here um, just in the interest of time because we still need to make some arches. And arches, which I believe I mentioned during the offset calculator, um, you're not going to really be able to use the offset uh, calculator for that because you're talking about a continuous uh, rotating block, so it can't configure those offsets. But to get started, and you're only going to do these, I usually only do this one, one item at a time. So I'm going to take a little piece of stone here, and then I want to set a scale for it. In this instance, 0.5. So I want to do it on a 15 degree curve. And then I'll have to manually come in and adjust each piece. And you can use 15 degrees, you can use 10, you can use 5, you can use however many you want. Uh, I don't recommend going above 20 degrees just because then it starts looking less like a circle and more like uh, a block of some kind. It starts to really lose some of that rounded appearance. Now if I want this arch to have a very sharp point, I'm going to stop here at the 45 degree mark and I'm going to just select this whole leg and copy and paste on a 180 degree offset in the yaw. And then all I have to do is move it. 
And of course I can put another block in there. Or I can pull this excess one here. And that's how you can make a real simple arch. So rotational offsets, as we've just seen, are not hard to do. They're not hard to make. Um, you can make some really cool stuff. Uh, the one thing that it is, is item intensive. Uh, you're talking about 40 planks here, 60 corner posts here, you know, 45 there, um, 24 here, 9 here, 12 here, you know, and it's just it's going to add up after a while so I mean when you start doing rotational offsets and spinning um, you know it's got to work within your item limit but next time join us and we will get going with custom pivot until then happy building